So in other videos we've talked about building a table like this, a uh, counts table or a frequency table. Uh, and now we're going to turn it into a frequency distribution chart or histogram. Uh, and there's lots of things we can do with charts, so this will just be one little step. We'll have to do several videos talking about different chart types and selecting different types of data if it's not in tables and things like that. Um, but for today, just this. So now we have this table. You don't want to use the whole table, though, when you're building a chart. So if I highlight the whole table, we can insert, uh, and there's several different things here. Uh, but this would be a bar chart or column chart is what Excel calls it. Um, so if I click this, uh, you'll see that there will be problems if you've highlighted the whole table. There's two major problems. One is you have percents in counts, and the percents are all between 0 and 1. Uh, and so they're going to show up really small and not be very readable uh, in any meaningful way in this chart. Uh, so you're going to pick either the number or the percent. You're not going to put both. Uh, and then totals is not really a good thing for a, a frequency distribution um, because, look, it, it's way bigger than everything else because it's the sum of everything else and it makes our uh, y-axis uh, a lot larger. So we could have a max, you know, down here in the 15 to 20 range for the rest of these. Um, but instead we have to go way up because of this one bar and it makes it hard to read all of this. So we're not going to include um, the totals. Uh, this row just is going to be left out. <clears throat> if I want to do the counts, uh, I can use these two columns and it'll put these counts on the y-axis. So insert bar 2D column. So now we have this y-axis where it shows the counts. Uh, if I'd rather have it show as percents, uh, then I have to do a little bit more work, not very much. I can just highlight the first column here and then hold control down and highlight this while I'm holding control and it'll omit everything in between uh, and then do the same thing insert click drop down 2d chart boom now we have percents on the y-axis so you know sometimes you'd rather have percent sometimes you'd rather have counts it's just kind of up to you depending on what kind of chart you're going to build uh, if we do percents we generally want to then include in this title the sample size we would put n equals 51 and if you're wondering why we have 51 states, the District of Columbia is included in our data in this case. Um, so anyway, we have the, the month, in a particular month here, we've pulled, um, you know, unemployment rates. So let's chart those out. Um, I'm going to stick just counts for now, and we'll talk about how we um, can modify the chart. So in older versions of Excel, um, I'm on Windows 8, so this is the newer version of Excel, and it has this setup. Uh, in older ones, the chart tools are more broad, so there's more stuff up here um, that you can pick from. There's still some of it up here, um, but now a lot of the older functionality has been put into this plus, and you can mess with different chart elements. You can also click on any piece of the chart and then right-click and format uh, if you want to mess with individual pieces. Um, so we'll do that a little bit too. Um, but for now, my chart doesn't mean very much if I show this to somebody uh, and it says number of states and some numbers. They have no idea what these bars represent. So the first thing we need to do is add some axis titles. I can just click this and it'll add two axis titles. If you don't want both axis titles, you can click this little arrow and pick the one you want. Uh, and then there's some more options, like if you don't want a rotated one over here and all kinds of stuff. So um, there are some other ways to mess with that uh, by going into this more options, but for now, we're just going to add one on both and, and tell people what our x-axis here is, which is our unemployment rate. And that is a percentage. Your other option is we could go in here uh, and add percents onto each of these. and then it'll show up down here. So if you'd rather, you could do that as well. All right, so we have one axis label. The other axis label this is gonna be the number of states. And then we need a title to kind of explain all of this. So US um, unemployment rate distribution. And so you can see most, the most common rate right now is between 5 and 6%. Most of the states are here. And then as we get away in either direction, it goes away. So uh, it looks slightly normal. 
Um, <laughs> we'd need a lot more data points to kind of see if it is if this sort of thing distributes normally. Um, but uh, anyway, we only have 51 to deal with. Um, so this is a, a basic chart. Uh, it's not terrible, uh, and and it'll tell people what you're trying to show. Uh, so you can see the number of states at different unemployment rates and kind of get your own picture of what, what the world looks like. And then if you go to the source data, you can highlight, you know, where is unemployment really high? Well, District of Columbia, Nevada, West Virginia, South Carolina, or where is it really low? Nebraska, North Dakota, uh, and maybe that'll, you know, depending on what you're trying to explain, that those things might be useful too. Um, but that's the, the basic idea of a chart. And then we, like I said, we can go in and mess with lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. So, you know, up here in the design, we can, we can mess with custom kind of designs if you want. Um, uh, a particular type of look um, but uh, in general I, I use a basic layout I try and keep things fairly simple uh, we can mess with color schemes um, or we can do that within here uh, so that's that's not hard to do so if I want to change the color uh, of all of these bars I can do that by right clicking and there's a fill you know and you can do you know more fill colors you can pick very specifically what sort of color you're looking for. You can make it slightly transparent. Um, you can, you know, even mess with the levels of red, green, and blue down to uh, as much detail as you want in here. So we're just going to pick something. We're going to go pink. Sure, why not? Oh, it didn't like that. No, I don't want black. Uh, how about this weird yellow color? Awesome. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Uh, right now, these data labels, that's what are in the end of these. When I click some of these custom formats, they showed up. If you don't like those data labels there, you can take them out or you can move them. <clears throat> right now, they're uh, inside the end. You can move them down to the bottom of each one. You can, you know, uh, put them outside so they're on top of the bars, etc. So we have that kind of ability. Uh, right now, grid lines, we have some major horizontal grid lines. Uh, you can also put in vertical grid lines. Um, so if we want like a major vertical grid line, we can click here uh, and it'll drop lines in between each of our um, uh, bars. So that can be useful sometimes. Um, we don't really need a legend on this one. If you have multiple variables, you might want a legend where it tells you if we had multiple different bars. Um, and then it tells you what the different colors are. So you'd have multiple colors, so you kind of have to distinguish. Um, we'll do that in a later video. We can put in trend lines. That doesn't really make sense in this because X isn't really a, a continuous. But if we had like a time series, we could use things like trend lines. We'll talk about those in another video as well. Um, but there's lots of stuff we can do. Uh, we can go down here and format this axis directly too and talk about all the options. Um, so we can go down, you know, if it's a data axis, you can tell it that. Um, you can talk about the tick marks, um, which is these spaces here where the grid lines are hitting. Uh, you can flip the order, although in this case you probably don't want to go from highest to lowest unemployment just because people usually read left to right. Um, but it is an option and sometimes that's useful. <coughs> uh, tick marks, again, we can put... Um, some things that kind of stick down here if we need to. Um, we can label things differently. Um, oh, axis, uh, axis position right now we're between tick marks. We can also put them on the ticks so we can move the bar to the center of these grid line. Um, instead of having them between the bars we can have them on the bars if we really want and that'll put these numbers in a slightly different position uh, if we think that's easier to read. You know, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff we can do um, within all these drop-down menus. So depending on what you want to do, you just kind of have to go through. We can talk about different fills and lines. We can put, you know, line borders and all kinds of things around these. We can add shadows and 3D effects and all kinds of things to our bars. I don't generally like to mess with these because I you know, if you want to make um, something really fancy, I guess you can. Um, but generally, I think it's better to have something really easy to read. Um, that's what I tend to focus on. And then we can mess with alignments and all kinds of stuff, too. Um, so, you know, we can format those. Uh, this 
axis, like I said, if, if we want to separate the bars, we might format the uh, Y axis to have a smaller maximum, uh, something like that. And we can change if instead of every two, we could make it every, you know, three or four or five or two and a half, you know, whatever we want it to be, uh, would be our major units, um, things like that. We can show all minor units if we want to um, have uh, more lines running across here, but that can make it harder to read. Uh, and then we have a lot of the same things we talked about before. Where is the label position? Do we want them on or in between ticks and things like that and all the other shadows and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, there's lots of options within these. Uh, and then also if you click, you see the box around the total. We can right click and format, oh, not the axis. Format the plot area too in the same way, etc. So every little piece is kind of, uh, you can mess with a bunch of different pieces. Um, but for now, we're going to leave a lot of that alone. I just want you to be able to build a, ba uh, um, a basic chart, uh, and then we'll get more sophisticated with the next, uh, with some of the other videos about this. Okay.